Hey everyone, the crowdfunding campaign for Video Game High School Season 3 is now live. Head on over to rocketjump.com slash campaign, pledge for some campaign exclusive rad perks, and help make the final season of VGHS as awesome as it can possibly be. Hey, this is Freddy. And this is Des. Welcome to podcast number 35 of the Face Rocker podcast. This week we sat down with Bernie and Gavin of Rooster Teeth. Uh, they, we, well, Man, we talked about quite a bit of stuff. And these guys are like OG video legends. So it was awesome. Oh, from way back in the yeah, day. Yeah, they were doing it since before YouTube. So it was great to have a conversation with them. You can actually check them out in the latest episode of Movie Night, Secret Santa. They play uh, two uh, goons. <laughs> Wanted to tell you about a few things before we get going. Uh, we're doing a little fun thing with World of Warplanes. Uh, we have a uh, little bit of a contest going on right now. You can head over to uh, rocketjump.com to see it. And basically, you need to download it, take a selfie of yourself. You can see all the details on the contest page. But head over to bit.ly slash capital R, capital J, U, M, P, capital W, O, W, P. Well, that's impossible. We'll, we'll put it in the description. You can see it. But download the game. Uh, use the code if you're in the United States. Use the code Get Airborne to get seven days of premium for free and maybe win some of these, these sweet rig headsets. We're giving away five of them and a next-gen console of your choice to people who are participating. So head on over to our site and check it out. Another thing, Netflix. Netflix. VG, VGHS Season 1 and 2 is on Netflix, which is a which is awesome. Uh, you can head over to netflix.com slash rocket jump and sign up and you get three months for free. Three is crazy. Usually it's one. Yeah. Every promotion is one free month. No, there's like Nef- Netflix knows what's up. There's like you you know you want this. You want mm-hmm. Netflix. You can get three free months. Three. So if you're thinking about signing up for Netflix, head on over to netflix.com slash rocket jump. It'll help us out. And uh, take a look. Video game high school up on there. Ad free, fantastic and streaming. Finally, one last thing iTunes. Uh, we know a lot of you guys like to watch this on YouTube and put it on the background. It's awesome. It's fantastic. It's how I do it. However, how well, the way iTunes works and the way podcasts works, everyone looks at the subscriber numbers and stuff. So if you could, you could do us a huge favor, head on over to iTunes, find us on there. We'll put the link down there for you on our site and subscribe to us on iTunes. It'll help us out immensely with just, being able to do Just click the little button. Yeah, you don't have it's to do anything. Hurt. You don't have to do anything. You can just subscribe to it. Your computer will do all the work for you. Mm-hmm. This is the future. Our machines do our work for us. So please subscribe to us on iTunes, a Face Rocker podcast. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get to it. Lost my first episode too. Really? Really? Yeah, they went back. Lost. Yeah, mm-hmm. lost. Right. <laughs> then they learned everything about me, and they were like, "Now we can really, now we can really fucking hammer him." him. <laughs> God, it's brutal. That was oh man, they're terrible um, people. Oh, Charlie's still in here. Hey, Charles Peter. Barkley hanging out with us. Um, yeah, we're okay. So this is so. Here's the thing. So we are with uh, Bernie and Gavin from Hello. Rooster Hello. Teeth. Hello. And here's the thing that actually really surprises me. There is very little overlap between our audiences. As far Does as I can that tell. surprise you? Bernie's like, of course there's not. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you guys made bullshit. <laughs> uh, no, I, it, but well, I mean, I guess, I guess in my head, I don't. You know what it is? I don't know how big it really is. Like, I, in my head, it's like it wouldn't be surprising if it was like, yeah, there's like a hundred thousand million people, or whatever it is. But to me, it's like it, it, it's always felt like okay, gamer crowd is the gamer crowd, but clearly it isn't, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's interesting to me because like you guys, we, we look at you guys and we're like, man, we wish we had what those guys had uh, because you guys <laughs> have had, had Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wish we had Gavin. <laughs> Definitely. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but, but you guys have had, you guys have been, you guys are the, the OGs when it comes to Well, you guys were around online video. When, before we even started. Like yeah, exactly. we remember being in high school watching Red vs. Blue and just like the, the creation of this. I remember when you guys did your first non Red vs. Blue Thing. What was that? It was like six episodes. It was a horror game. It was another machinima type. Uh, panics. It was panics. Pa- panics. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. It's like I was like, wait, they're doing more stuff. Like it was the first. I don't remember yeah. success. I, I'll be honest. I remember being like, ah, it's not red versus blue. But it was like literally the first thing was like, but they're doing more stuff. And then as it went on, I was like, holy shit, this is becoming like a whole thing. Like you guys are becoming like a studio, like a, a whole brand. Is yeah. So and it's, it's, it was always, by the way, not to. I feel like we're we're just talking at you guys right now because yes. we're like we're just uh, talking- I love the lathering. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I feel so good. 
But it was, it's always hilarious to me when people come to us and they're like, oh, yeah, you guys are doing this and this. And we're like, Do you, you, you guys don't look at the internet history very much. The history of the internet, not internet history. You, there's horrible things in internet <laughs> history. But clearly you don't because we're not. We're not the first ones here doing this by a long shot, by a matter of years in a lot of cases mm-hmm. with, with what you guys do. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I, it, to me, it's always just interesting how quickly you know, it's, it's how interesting how quickly people forget things. Oh, no. We have that within our own audience. Because oh, yeah. we, we introduce new shows and we have a younger audience, they will have no idea about what took place in the first five years of our company. <laughs> our company started in 2003. Uh, we're now in our 11th year. Uh, and so, yeah, we have people that come in now, um, you know, who start watching internet video even, you know, like 12 years old. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, we were doing, you know, Red versus Blue when they were one, you know. Whoa. I mean, yeah, when we started Red versus Blue, which is, I guess you could say our kind of our uh, tent pole show that we're known for best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Halo cartoon. Um, yeah, well, that's a, that's the funny thing, right? Like, yeah. I'm sitting here. I'm like, we should probably contextualize this, but it's like, but I feel like we shouldn't. <laughs> but at the same time, for people listening, it's like, yeah, okay, real quick, just to go back. This is Red vs. Blue. It's a Halo cartoon. It was like it was the first. It was what Machinima originally meant before Machinima changed its meaning. Little M Machinima. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We should make jokes when they called us and they told us we. We, what we were doing was called machinima because we thought we invented this form of animation. We were amazed with ourselves. And uh, yeah, there's a guy, Paul Marino, he works at BioWare now, and he was the head of the Machinima Academy of Arts and Sciences. They handed out awards for this stuff. They said, yeah, no, what you're doing has a name. It's called Machinima, with a little M, made up by a guy in Scotland. And then he's the guy who sold his company, machinima.com, to a group of investors oh. in Southern California. They made Machinima into a th- capital M thing. Capital my, my B, favorite Machinima thing became was, a brand. It was when people used to try and promote, uh, pronounce the word Machinima. Oh, oh I had that problem so hard. Like Machinima. 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 And they'd like add syllables. Where Machinima. They were. <laughs> Machinima. We, we thought the word was so silly we would try to compete with it. We said, we're, we're calling what we do render vision. <laughs> so we <laughs> came with like silly terms and things like that. Like, like Vista Vision, like like old like old film terms for it. It's like, oh, you could have done like, you know, like render scope. And it's like, oh, it's wider now. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it is, it's so frustrating though when people don't even know that like they don't have any memory of that machinima was a thing and when red versus blue started like this form of filmmaking was going to go on and be this thing there's gonna be all these different uh productions made this way and i remember and this is super embarrassing i remember downloading quake 2 demos yeah and playing them back to play them back you go into the console of quake 2 and they play back this demo file and i remember seeing some of these movies that were done entirely in the quake 2 engine playing back from quake i was like this is cool this is so impractical. And, yeah, you know, it was like, it was you had so to have the to game watch. to watch it. So yeah. it, was, it wasn't like a movie; it was just like a memory file it from was, the game. But they, like but a Halo they, Three, but film. they had modified the cameras to cut and right. stuff. And it was like I remember trying to download some of these old tools in like Windows ninety eight uh, ME Millennium Edition. No, Windows Millennium <laughs> Edition was what my my old. Dell was rocking back in the day and like you're just like okay here's how you do a cut in this and it's like oh you have to reposition the camera within the game and then record that demo and then it's like what is going on it's so far beyond me you guys figured out the easier way to do it it's like you're doing in camera editing inside of a virtual world right it's It's like this like layer within a layer yeah it freaks me out yeah it still freaks me out to this day I remember there was like I don't think it was Forbes but I remember when you guys came out there was like articles about this is the future of filmmaking like this is gonna be everything there was the sims like people were doing the sims you don't have to laugh say it man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but well, well, you guys obviously started moving on to other stuff. Um, well, in a weird way, isn't it? Isn't but it, it is. No, no. I mean, that's what I mean. It was like I just remember like coming up in film, and I was like, "This is fascinating" because there's the Valve and all their mods and stuff like that, and Gary's mod and things like that. It was, and I remember like some of the and first source filmmakers was doing probably that. one of the most powerful tools that's out there today. It's just that not many people know how to use it. Yeah, and and it's kind of a weird. Tool it's also the licensing, well. and and you can't use it for commercial, or is that not true? So remember we looked at it for a moment when they first have you have you played with it the yeah a lot we did a one of the things that when Red Versus Blue got popular one of the practical applications of it is we could take a video game and we could make it look as good as it could and still be representative of the game right so right. that has a commercial application we made a lot of we've made a lot of television commercials for video games of the year like we made all the EA Sports commercials that had oh, yeah. gameplay in them for like four or five years. Yeah, yeah and that, and awesome. to me, and again, that's a side of that's a side of what you guys do. That no, again, if nobody knows about this, we don't, side of we that. don't, we never publicize that part of it, which is again hilarious because it's like, <laughs> wow, okay, you know, because because you know, we right now, you know, we're trying to become essentially sort of the following in your footsteps. We're trying to become a production entity and all the various things. So you know, we have like a post production arm. I'm, I'm so surprised to hear you guys describe yourself as trying to achieve that. Because to me, it's like you guys right now <laughs> in this moment are that group that's doing it as well 
as anybody else out there. It's good that we have that perception outwards, guys. Let's <laughs> yeah. try and maintain. Yeah. Hey, we did it, right? Let's try and maintain that. Was the, aura that was the plan. <laughs> Most of Rocket Jump is just us screaming. <laughs> just, yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. But and we just, stay calm on camera. Yeah, that's well, that's the one thing we do have. There's something we have in common right there. Like the Rocket Jump, you guys have as a brand over everything else. Yes. You know, starting yes. as Freddie W, which a lot of people thought well, was one person yeah, and, on you know, the it's whole kind channel. Of interesting because that was a very conscious decision this year because it's like okay we need to be we need to expand out we can't just be my name on it mm -hmm. yeah because and it's like because we want to find other creators we want to find someone to do another series and we trust and we think it's cool it's like by the way uh then it's going to go on a channel it's, good. it's got my name on it so everyone's going to think that i made it myself by myself <laughs> and that nobody else is involved Are you cool with that no you're oh don't no, come back come back no don't. yeah so it's like there's if we didn't do that it, nobody would hang around and we have to have we have to in a weird way it's like you have to unite under a brand. Well, what was that transition? Because it might have been, I just well, didn't notice. I was about to say, I might have not noticed it because I was so young, literally, when you guys started. It was like I was watching it even before high school. But there was definitely a time period where I only knew you guys as Red vs. Blue. Right. And I remember I stopped watching for a while. I was in high school or college or something. I came back. It was like Rooster Teeth. Like, I, like I was like, "What is Rooster Teeth?" Mm. It's like, "Oh, it's still Red vs. Blue." And I started watching and whatnot. But what? When did you do that transition, or whether you're always kind of branded Rooster Teeth? We always had Rooster Teeth after the trailer, which was in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, we introduced the Rooster Teeth company making Red vs. Blue because I mean, we just had this idea that. You know, we were educating people at the time that this isn't just a one-off video. Yeah. That you're going to watch this one, and there's going to be another one next week. And from day one, if you go back and look at the very first videos we did, from the day it started, we called it the popular web series Red vs. Blue, even before it started. <laughs> um, just to, just to start great. educating people, like, oh, this is the popular web series Red vs. Blue. And that's in episode two, that first we first said that great. in our PSA. And uh, we put the Rooster Teeth brand over it because we didn't, I mean, the, the the episodes were supposed to go six episodes and done. Mm, so yeah. then we thought, we need something to hold people in place like when we're making a new show. When mm. people get tired of this thing, it's done. And now here we are, you know, 11 seasons in, you know, <laughs> yeah. heading, right. into, heading into 12. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, was there, a, was there a name of your company before you actually... No, it didn't Monica exist. Rooster Teeth? No, the, the URL was redversusblue.com. Yeah. yeah. And then we switched over to roosterteeth.com. Mm -hmm. So you did it very early on. Yeah. Gav, Gav was actually one of our very first viewers. Um, yeah, I was, a, I was a fan of... Uh, Red vs. Blue, that's how I know them. I'm just a fan from England. Signed up on their website in 2003. Are you still just a fan? or? <laughs> yeah, <do> you... always. <laughs> I'm that touch him in real life now. Right? <laughs> he's really, stop. He's, he's, he's stop. Achieved, he's I've achieved earned it. the highest level of creepiness. <laughs> yeah, you managed to do it all the way across the pond, and now he's right next to you, and at any point could kill you in your sleep. But it's, it's, yeah. it's an awesome feeling. Like, I was 14, some dumb 14-year-old 14 kid, 14 kid who was going to school, and... You know, stacking fruit and veg in a supermarket, and then look like a girl. I had, I had really good. I looked like, like I was in Hanson. So <laughs> he did. That was the thing. <laughs> he looked like he was in Hanson. He did. Yeah, got well, got rid of that. And it's interesting because you know your your background is like super. I mean, like I know your equivalent in Hollywood. Like there's the guys. It's like the Phantom Text. It's like it's just it's so interesting. Yeah. To be like there, to there go was, from. Um, I met a guy in my town who just happened to have. There were two Phantoms in the UK at that time. Yeah. They were very old ones they were standard deaf and he had both of them so he was pretty much if there was slow-mo on tv in a commercial he did it and i was like i love slow-mo i can't believe this guy's in my town so i just kind of shadowed him on his job for a year for free just yeah, went yeah. around seeing and it got to the point where he found a use for me and then i worked for him and then for like seven years i just did that i shot uh, commercials and movies and music videos in the uk and we were known as the slow-mo guys yeah like in the industry <laughs> because that's all that yeah the, yeah but course. then uh he's not the guy from the slow-mo guys right, right, right. channel he's a really old guy but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not just, a really dumb guy <laughs> i just like the idea because people used to come up to us on set and be like you're the slow-mo guys right and it's like yeah we're gonna do the slow-mo on this thing yeah i just yeah, like yeah. that name it's just catchy no it's me. a good name yeah. and, and the funny thing is too it's also like in you know having done like the visual effects stuff and that's you know freelance things it's also the same thing where you're just like you're that part of it and it's almost like what you do is magical and like nobody messes with you because you're the only ones who could do it like yeah I, I, i've seen this like people it's weird the mysticism that goes around on set especially here and it's like oh yeah yeah you can't touch that it's like mm -hmm. the camera's rebooting oh yeah stay away from it. Like, what are you talking about yeah like oh yeah, yeah it has to it has to rest we gotta put it over put the thing over and it's like what and they, it's, they used to be really temperamental like you had to have the camera on for like 40 minutes before it would film anything <laughs> Like the, the, image, the temperature? Yeah, the sensor would fluctuate oh. so much that the, the grain would be like... <laughs> <laughs> it had to warp the time field. Yeah, and then you had to like cover the, the lens and do a, a right. black reference. They had to have an internal capping shutter that does that on its own. But you, I used to be like up a ladder with a mouse mat against the lens usually, <laughs> which is how I used to do that. But, so he uh, actually had a really traditional like apprenticeship style coming up. Yeah. Yeah, that's rare. 
Yeah, which is rare. I was just I was yeah. just really young. Like I I started when I was seventeen mm-hmm. and I was on movies. So yeah, it was yeah. it was re- it was like way in at the deep. End. <laughs> there was like there was like a perfect time period where you're young enough, but most people aren't like proactive enough to be there. But if you're young enough, you could go up to films and be like, "Hey, can I help?" I'm like, "Oh, this is a cool yeah. kid." Once you get to like seventeen, it's like, "Who the fuck? Go get a job, man!" Like, no, <laughs> yeah, who's this the fuck asshole? <laughs> like, if you're young, you can probably get away with being like, "Hey, I'll just help for free, man." I just want to learn how to. If yeah. I tried to do that right now, if I walked onto a film set, they'd be like, "Who is this like, creepy hey, dude?" Can I just help out for free? Like, get off the set. Who yeah. are you? I, I was I was a big fan of. Shaun of the Dead when I was young. Mm, All yeah. of a sudden, the first movie I worked on was Hot Fuzz. It was the shot oh, of the uh, oh, police station at the end blowing up. It was oh. a model, like yeah, yeah. probably so cool. the size of this table. I was just like, uh, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> this is going to be in the movie, and I'm. Yeah, I'm doing awesome. the Do it slow, yeah. He shot Top Gear too. He got to see who the Stig was, <gasps> before, like years before anybody had any even speculation of it. Oh man, as oh a young gosh. British boy. <laughs> but he, uh, I, mean, I, I don't know if this is live, but I don't know if we can tell the story or not. It's live. And I'll probably get it wrong, but. Uh, didn't you, when you were like 17, didn't you have to sh- be on a shoot with Kate Moss topless? Yeah. As a 17 year old? Oh, yeah. it had to be there. Yeah. It had to be there. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was Rimmel. Um, she was getting hosed down and like, going like, oh, like this. Yeah. And then uh, she was wet. So for the next take, she was she needed a dry shirt. Yeah, it needed to dry So off. she was just like, give me another one. And I was just like, that's in real life in front of me right now. <laughs> this is great. I really like this job. <laughs> But because he came up uh, and you know right away, like right in grade school, got this apprenticeship and came up that way, he didn't go to university. Mm. And so we loved Gav. He was one of the top members in our community. We built a social media site for Rouge Teeth yeah, and yeah. another way to keep people in place and have them do something. Uh, and there was a gaming function of it where people would level up their profiles. And he had always had one of the most popular profiles. And we loved Gavin. We wanted to find a way to have him come work for us. But yeah. because he didn't go to university, him getting a visa was a difficult thing. So he actually started... The slow mo guys channel in order to so that have we could it. submit him for awards, uh, get him some renown, and, and he then could the get a visa. Three is that it? The what's oh, oh one oh one visa. The, uh, yeah, I, I was just kind of bummed because I'd done all this cool stuff, like all this movie stuff. Yeah, but yeah. It, it wasn't deemed a very creative position because most of the time it's a technician, technician and you're like, yeah. kind of just wrestling the camera. Um, <laughs> so I was like, well, this this blows, and I was just kind of <laughs> bummed out. I still had a really cool job and stuff, but I was like, there's a really expensive and really pretty rare for this country high-speed camera just sat in a box at the weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got to be able to become well-known with this thing. YouTube right. was the perfect choice. And right, I'd, right. I'd uploaded some slow-mo stuff, some very early stuff, mm. and uh, it had gone viral, the equivalent of what viral was before YouTube. Because beyond. all these technicians are definitely not thinking yeah, about, they're hey, absolutely not. they're thinking this is my gig and I'm going to go to a, a job and shoot and the card is getting shot and the milk droplet's going in again and we're done. There we go. Water so, balloon. Yeah, I, I had like a video of me throwing a balloon at someone's face. We shot it in 2004 <laughs> and I, all I did was I hosted it and I put it in my journal on Rooster Teeth. Yeah. Someone then downloaded that and uploaded it. It was on it was on break. Oh, so you didn't even upload? No, I, I've never oh. uploaded that video, but it's, uh, you've probably seen it. At some yeah, point. yeah, it was one of the really early ones, but it ended up on bigboys.com, which is break.com now. And like <laughs> yeah, right on the front page, I was like, <laughs> and, and one of the first times I came to Austin, I walked into a coffee shop below the old Rooster Teeth office and someone was watching it on oh, a laptop. And I was just his like, first day in the US, he walked in and saw somebody watching his video from his garden. That's in the a UK. very skewed yeah. view of the so US from, at that point. From, yeah. that, yeah. from that point, I'm like, there's an audience that people want to see weird stuff in slow motion. <laughs> From that point, you're like, I'm huge here. <laughs> it was crazy because he made that channel to qualify for a visa to come work for us. And now you have how many subs on? Uh, there's three million on slow motion. Yeah, I mean, he's got videos that are like way beyond it. He's got a video that's, he'll immediately correct me. He's got a video that's got 38 million views. 43. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I not, think, nothing anyone's yeah. counting or anything. Yeah, he said that water, that six foot water balloon video, has got 43 million views on it. You know, it's just, it's crazy. And so it's like, by the time we actually were going to get him a visa, the company was like, does Gavin even want to come work <laughs> anymore? Can't afford him anymore? Is that even necessary? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he got too cool. And, and, and it's, it's one of those things where, yeah, it, it's, everyone gets to it from sort of a different spot, but it's really interesting to see kind of where you come from. And, and a lot of times the one I see this, you know, a very common thread is just like, it's, figuring out something interesting to do with what you have access to. You know, I think there's so many people now that are just Definitely. like, what do I do now? What do I do? How do I do this? And it's just like, why are you asking me? You know yeah. your life better than I do. What do you have Look going around on? you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like, but uh, but but here's the thing that's really interesting about YouTube side. You really don't get a lot of the people, not a lot of people are coming from like any sort of traditional background. There's a lot of sort of people coming, especially right now at least, on the YouTube side, which is just like, ah, I stumbled upon doing this and I started doing this and it kind of caught on and it's not like, 
from any sort of filmmaking background, which, you know, I think even, I mean, like, I remember I see the poster with you, like, is it you and Joel on the, and you're in the offices there? For yeah, the old it's, for, school. Uh, it's a 16 millimeter film that we made in college. I was a computer science student. Yeah. And I had switched to computer science from pre-med. And so I had to, like, I have, like, organic chemistry as an elective on my transcript. <laughs> it's the worst college transcript ever. But I ended up with a lot of classes that I had to take prerequisites one after the other. So I ended up with, like, three or six hours a semester. That was it. Uh, so I wandered down to the TV station, the student television station. I said, hey, I'm a computer science student. I want to learn how to make movies. Rodriguez had just made El Mariachi right, yeah. at UT. And so I had this idea. If I want to learn how to make movies, don't sit in a class. Spend the money. Just make a movie. And by the time I'm done... I'll know everything I need to know to make movies. Mm -hmm. So that's when I met Matt, my production partner. He was a film student. Oh, okay. I yeah. met him to make that movie. We met Joel, uh, who's in our show, uh, Red vs. Blue. He's one of our main actors. And uh, yeah, we shot a 16 millimeter film. And then I built a nonlinear editor. This is like 98. So I oh, built man. a nonlinear editor with a four gig drive in it. Cost fifteen hundred bucks for a four gig drive. <laughs> we could like we could digitize like 12 minutes at a time and work on it that way. And uh, and so we, we did that. It took us like a year, and yeah, after that, I was we were you know Off went to the, the film festival circuit, yeah. tried all that, and uh, I call that the process of you go to a film festival. It's like you're trying to convince five people to let you show the movie to two hundred people. That's like your <laughs> ultimate goal in that. And uh, I Matt had moved out to LA, was working in visual effects. Joel had come out here to work as an actor. And I was just tooling around with some guys back in Austin making funny videos. We made an Apple Switch ad parody. Uh, you know, the, the, where they sit the white background yeah, and why yeah, they switched yeah, to yeah, Mac? Yeah. We did one with Gus where we said he switched to Mac for the games. And then oh. he realizes over the course of the video there's no <laughs> games on Mac. And uh, like he's playing Photoshop and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, we put that up. And this is 2001. We, we put it up online, had to encode it ourselves as QuickTime and WMV and DivX and put it up online. And Matt was at his office here in L.A. Yeah. And the next day, I got a call from him. He said, I just saw this video on a guy's desk at work, and it's Gus in it. And I said, I put that up like 12 hours ago or you know, 16 yeah. hours ago, right right after work. And I realized, here's a guy that I would have called and said, watch this video. Mm. And before I could do that, it got to him, mm. which is, a, I think, a common story today. But at the time, it was like, why the hell are we doing all this film festival stuff? Yeah. Let's just... Yeah. Let's just get busy doing this ourselves and going directly. And to the people. hard thing back then was, I mean, for us originally, like I'm sure it must be similar. Like YouTube was like it was a hosting platform where you didn't have to pay money. Like that was really what it was. It was, it was like, a huge deal. Because I remember well, being was like, even around when you started. No, no yeah, they, they, was, they, they were three us, years in our mission. Three years. And for us, yeah. when we started out, it was just like because I was hosting it on the USC yeah. student twenty megabytes. And I, I remember, hosted some videos on MySpace. Whoa. Like because they had their my because we were talking about the John Woo contest from a while ago. That was oh, I can't yeah. find it anymore because it's on MySpace. Harsh. See, we had the other problem, which is now lost to history, yeah. which is we put a video online. Uh, it got linked on Slashdot, Fark, and Penny Arcade in one day. Oh, no. Brought our servers down. We tried to find a way to rehost it. At the end of the month, we had a $15,000 server bill for the month. We were, we were guys working in tech support at the time. And that was, that was like that generation of content people. Yeah. There was a lot of people that were, came out of tech support. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did yeah. It. Like the Homestar guys who are a huge influence oh, on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, the Homestar Runner. There was a lot of Flash animation. It seems like all those people were like miserable tech support people. <laughs> who like, you know, we're, we're finding a way to vent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You talk about being lost to history. Homestar, Homestar Runner. Runner, you talk to people today, they just don't know. That is know. the first viral series. There was a good AV Club article. Todd uh, Vanderhoff just wrote a ma you should, it's a fascinating, he wrote this massive history on Homestar Runner. And oh, really? Important, because it is, it's like, that's, I remember, that's one of the most important. Yeah, uh, it was, it was. To it me, bar really got, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I remember, I remember, it must be the same way I think, you know, some kids now wait for episodes of stuff coming out from us. I remember waiting for Strong Bad Email. Yep. <laughs> like every mm -hmm. Friday it was, and just, and like getting my mind blown every time. We'd all gather around at school. To watch Strong Bad Email. Well, Homestar Runner was like kind of just even realizing what the internet was to me yeah. at that time because first it was like, what's the internet? That's the thing oh, the I thing like log AOL. into the chat rooms on AOL. No, like I logged into <laughs> at school to find like articles. That's all I knew it was, yeah. right? Then it was like, that's right. Talk to my adult friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then it was like AOL chat rooms. Like, wait, you can talk to people on the internet? Because we're at the time period where we remember the growth. I still of the remember. Internet. I still remember the day I was like, colon, right parentheses. What's that mean? And the guy, turn your head sideways. I'm like, <gasps> The internet was like the place to go to the Britannica Encyclopedia, <laughs> like you know, like like the CD that came for free. Encarta, like, and, and, and Carta, and, yes. right. and then at one, and then one day, somebody's like, "Have you seen the Homestar Runner?" And it was this. I was like, "Who the like? You can do this? Like you can see this on the internet? Like what is?" And then that's like, yeah, that's the whole time period of Hamster Dance and 
banana oh and all that other stuff. YTMDs. Yeah. And well, that's why Flash stuff did so well back then. Bandwidth. Was, yeah, yeah, the yeah. codec, you could compress that vector animation so far down and scale it so far up without any kind of increase in the file size. And that's what made all this revolution possible it was uh, with online video was the flash codec yeah, coming flash out and that's what YouTube is based on or was based on yeah originally. back in the day VP whatever 8 or 7 there's or videos of, like Shockwave remember Shockwave.com oh, yeah, yeah. I remember all the great movie tie-in sites that had Shockwave flash games <laughs> mm-hmm. and being like in my head there's a moment where I was like two megabytes I'll be here all day <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go outside like I'd, be like, I'd only download things that were like a megabyte, and even then, I was like, God, that's a lot. I remember when YouTube started, I'd load a video, and I'd look at the timer the, the bottom, the bar, and I'd see three minutes. Who's going to watch three minutes of a video? <laughs> yeah. Now it's like hour and a half, you know? Oh, it's really let's, grown let's, up. Let's, have, let's pour one out for, of course, Real Player, the greatest, <laughs> oh, yeah, Real Player. the greatest video codec of all time, and the greatest video playing. That's how solution. we all know what buffering means. Did anyone spend more time watching the video? <laughs> we all learned what? Like buffering was always longer than the actual video, yeah, right? Especially yeah. every yeah. single time yeah. we use it. And there's that, and Real Player would seem just to get bigger and bigger to the point because there's the timer was like it was competing with Shockwave. So like I was like I remember <laughs> downloading like Real Player like five, and it came with like. And like a games button. I was like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> like, like, was like what, what is this? Like, like you know what? I were, Real Studios games? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, like, so like, it was like nuts. And that was like the time of Winamp and all that. That was a weird time period. Winamp just shut down. That's Did it? So, yeah, you didn't hear oh. about this? Oh, man. They're I like, Winamp is that's, making no more money. <laughs> that's a sad day. Uh, and, and, uh, that's okay. because they never charged for their skins. And I, and I had some sick, money on the table. <laughs> I had some yep. sick anime skins. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember that being like, well, I can't listen to this Star Wars soundtrack until I find the right Star Wars skin for <laughs> right. it. Not like, the R2-D2 is the EQ. That's pretty cool. Not yeah. only, only then will John Williams' score be properly contextualized in my music <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet like that, like the the precocious kid who just was like the Winamp skin master. Like, it's like, damn, I totally did the wrong thing. Like, <laughs> I spent like three years of like IT like and like computer science learning how to skin Winamp things. I remember what <laughs> many Fridays spent organizing my MP3 library download through Napster and being like, better rename, better bulk rename, and finding these bulk renaming utilities. This is why, oh, by geez. the way, we are who we are today. <laughs> was because Friday night, you know, all these Nobu and Matsu soundtracks for Final Fantasy need to get categorized, and damn it, they're not going to do it themselves. Yep. <laughs> so I didn't, you were uh, you were a computer science guy originally? Yeah, originally I, I, I started as pre-med and then switched to computer science. And then film. No, I never got a degree in film. Well, no, but now yeah, but then it. I yeah study film. Yeah. So I don't have any I don't have any education in film whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And I own a production company. But where did the film, where did the film interest come from? I you know, just always had it. Always had the bug of like I'd start off as like creative writing in high school, yeah. and then you know I mean back back when I went to school, early nineties high school, like when I graduated. Um, I mean, there was no like even if a high eight camera was like a rare thing to get your hands yeah, on. Yeah, it was yeah. like if you want a high eight camera, it's gonna be like a two thousand dollar purchase. There was no digitized video, anything like that. I learned to edit on a AB roll, you know, oh, for yeah. like hard cuts on tapes and stuff like that. I mean, I wasn't editing on like a Steenbeck cutting film or anything. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that revolution all happened just as I started. So uh, yeah, but my, my, that would allow you to do like because Rooster Teeth. Then when it started, did you just host? Your own videos on your own player, like what was even if it was before YouTube? What were you using? So we had to tell people it was that was a huge hassle. One of the biggest things that saved us money or made us money over the years was the change in the codecs because our file sizes went from 80 megs for a postage stamp size three minute video to now we can do 17 megs for you know 10 minutes. Mm -hmm, Um, You know, and it's people don't care. And the best part about it is it's in your browser. Before we had to tell people how to download codecs. Oh, we yeah, had to yeah, like QuickTime link. Uh-huh. And very, yeah, yeah, every right episode of save as. Red versus Blue came with right click and download, or you know BitTorrent if you want to use that as well. Yeah, yeah, we educated people how to use BitTorrent, and then <laughs> it became the biggest piracy tool ever. And they <laughs> pirated our DVDs, so that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, we used like DivX, WMV, QuickTime. So, and then we did a low res and a high res version. So I'd encode six files every week for just one video, just oh, so that wow. everybody could see this thing. So when it all got unified, that was great. And then yeah. you know the idea was too. Uh, back in the day that, oh, let's get a popular thing, and then the ad truck will just show up at the front door. It didn't, <laughs> yeah. didn't work that way at all. Yeah. You know, I mean, YouTube is kind of like that. It, it enables people to become partners, and they can just start, check a button, and then they have ads and monetize their videos. It was a but lot was a, harder. Was, we, we, we have a friend of ours who ran the top Britney Spears fan site. Really? In the world at the time, worldbritney.com. <laughs> and Because uh, we always wonder, like, like, man, what are you, like, He's some Swedish. He's a Swedish guy. Uh, he was he was a skydiver in one of our. He, he hooked us up the skydiving video, and because he likes skydiving, and we're always like, what do you what, what does what does he do? Do we know 
know what he does? And finally, we got the story out of him where he's like, oh, I just I just sold my website, which I ran. And he was telling us stories of the heyday of 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 pop-ups and ads and display ads. And he was like, yeah, you want to know what's crazy? Pop-up ads, you want to know why they were everywhere? $15 CPM. Just straight up, if it popped up, you got every thousand, $15. And we're like, what? <laughs> like, this is insane. It's like, yeah, 20 bucks, 20 to 25 bucks. Display ads, like, yeah, each site, each page on World, it's like 50 bucks just every time it showed. And I was like, Dude. that's insane, you know, for, for, as a CPM number. And we're just like, now, of course, now the video is like all in single digits, even you know, low single digits. And we're just like, what? This, and then they're like, yeah, no wonder there was a tech bubble. Are you kidding? These <laughs> websites are sitting here getting $50 every thousand people who show up. But then they got crazy, too, because you'd be in an ad network, and then you could sign people up in your ad network. Oh, yeah. And inherit everything. It was a multi-level marketing. Do you marketing remember the like, click-to-get oh, yeah. click uh-huh. stuff things? And, and people all would, advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, another then, one. and yeah. then people would like sit there and, like, and write scripts to just click on ads yep. for their computer, and then be like, I made $8, but I signed up a bunch of people, which means actually <laughs> this month I made $2,000. <laughs> Web rings? Web rings. Remember yeah. Web rings, we were, we were just talking like they're gone. <laughs> the, 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 top, <laughs> the top bar of just like going from it's and how, so weird they all connected. And how every site seemed to somehow be the top one percent of all websites. Oh, yeah, yeah. always. And the, it's the awards award. page. Yeah. I love Golden Web Award. Yeah, what happened yeah. to the Golden Web Award? Hit counters. Webbies, I'm sure. <laughs> we should put a we should put a, we should put a we should put a hit counter on Rocket Jump. Hey guys, how's it going? Jimmy Wong, aka Ted from VGHS here, telling you to check out shop.rocketjump.com. We've got brand new merchandise like iPhone cases and iPad decals to shirts, Blu-rays, and posters, including brand new Season 2 designs from our friends at Danger Brain. There's also the incredibly popular VGHS hoodie, and some of our older shirts are on sale for a great price. So make sure you check it out right after this podcast at shop.rocketjump.com. You know, we were just we were just doing our podcast awards, uh, which you won one of our first podcast awards yes, for way back. Flower Warfare. Way back, we loved your video, and uh, that was our one of our first Internet Video of the Year awards we gave out. But we were talking about this year of movies. There was really it was a crazy year of just like major duds that just oh, didn't go yeah, anywhere yeah, yeah. and do anything. It's like movies that should have been huge but weren't, like World Wars D and Ender's Game. Yeah. Um, start the Star Trek that people panned. You know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I liked it actually. I, yeah. I don't know a lot of people didn't, but yeah. But it was a crazy my favorite year. thing about that Star Trek was like it's the world's like it is nine eleven times a thousand just happened here, and then it's like one block later in San Francisco, business as usual. <laughs> like it's like they're running, and like, you don't think about it because the pace is so high. But then on a second viewing, you're like, these guys just saw a spaceship explode 10, 10 buildings, and this guy is like holding a coffee and he's late for work. Like, <laughs> I, what? What's going on? And it's like and they're just running past the crowd. And, uh, the Man of Steel's like that when oh, he Man puts Steel up the Clark, a, yeah. Clark Kent glass and goes to work. And, Where is he going to work? Yeah, because <laughs> everything I saw got destroyed. They're, everyone's dead. Yeah. Yeah. No, Man or Steel. they just make out in front of. Oh, that everybody was a, that was my that favorite. Was my favorite moment <laughs> in, uh, in in movie movies this year was Man of Steel when he when Superman makes out within super earshot of <laughs> clearly people being crushed to death. <laughs> He's standing yeah. in the equivalent of the ground zero <laughs> hole, <laughs> making out with his woman. And then it's like but he barely knows. Like they, they, they haven't even set up a romance. He's just like yeah. Yeah, we're the two hands. We're the two attractive people in this movie. So <laughs> oh, oh, we're gonna kiss. And then I don't know if you saw it in theaters, but the the line in Superman where he's like, uh, "I heard that doesn't, ha- but uh, it doesn't happen with humans because I'm not human." It was like she's like, uh, "I heard it only goes downhill after the first kiss." And then Superman goes, "Good thing I'm not human because that only happens with humans." <laughs> I I saw people <laughs> going like, "Ooh, ooh. ooh like, like <laughs> really out of my seat." Oh god. That's also one of those lines that just like so gets into the head of that writer. Like, who writes the line saying, "Yeah, it all goes downhill after the first kiss"? Like, what sad person was like, "That's a normal thing people say, right?" Like, after the first kiss, yeah. it goes downhill, right? That's how it yeah. works, guys. It's like, what? No, don't write that. Nobody enjoy this it. kiss. As good as it gets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody thinks that. Who does that? that? <laughs> Nobody thinks that. Uh, he no. has a lot to. <laughs> he has a reputation, right? He, if he sucks in bed, what's he gonna do? Superman, Superman right? Yeah, it's tough. It's a lot of expectation. Yeah, he's gonna like, live I, up to a lot. He just lifts a building. Like, <laughs> well, I heard he suck in bed. He's like, just like lifts a skyscraper. <laughs> well, did you see that? Did you see that uh, VFX short? You just that imagine was, um, two, two ladies at tea the next day going, more like pretty good. Man. <laughs> 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 That's a great joke. Uh, but uh, did you see this VFX short that came out? It was uh, it was kind of like taking on the concept of like a Man of Steel, like a Superman type of thing, and it was from the perspective of people on the ground, and it was just like an alien being. 
who is just murdering criminals yeah. and doesn't talk at all <laughs> is now on Earth and we can't stop it. And it's just like a horror film. No. It's a really interesting. Really? It sounds, sounds awesome. really interesting. That take sounds cool. Because it's like this guy is just like, it's just this guy, it's just like faceless thing just floating around and just killing people. And that's like, we can't <laughs> stop him. Like, what is this? It's like, turns into a horror movie. It's like, yeah, pretty much. But if he's from, if he's from a Midwest town, then it's totally cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> what it is. He's American. American red wine, American. blue American. He was no in the league. It's, it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, but it was weird. I thought it was a great, or at least a different approach because everyone when they make Superman, everybody wants to make the origin story. Like, I don't know how many times we're going to watch that yeah. in our lifetime. Yeah. Superman's origin. My dad even was like, yeah, I was like, what do you think? He's like, I don't know. I saw this movie before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least this one was weird is that it treated him like an alien. Like that was, yeah. a, it was a weird oh, alien when movie. When it opens yeah. up and it's like, welcome to alien world. I was like, all right. The first 15 flying. minutes were my favorite part because I was like, what? I, I couldn't believe this was the movie. It's like, what the fuck? Like yeah. flying it's wing. like dinosaurs and shit. Yeah, it looks like a new MMO. Yeah. yeah. I, was like, I was like, what <laughs> trailer? Is well, at least it was really interesting. I don't know. That was interesting. But now yeah. we're at that point where the end of the year, I mean, you already saw Wolf of Wall Street, but like now you, now there's too many good movies. So good. There's the a yeah, American Hustle coming out. I, I didn't get a chance to see um, 12 Years a Slave yet, which I hear is like, uh, prepare yourself to just be depressed for right, yeah. the weekend. Inside Lewin Davis uh, was Inside great. Inside Davis was really was good. Movie. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. But yeah. Gravity, like right up until December, was really the clear standout of the year for me, at least. Yeah. Oh, it, absolutely. I was Actually, I was, at, I was at Thanksgiving. I was talking to one of my friends. Uh, he's a guy who worked at, um, uh, works at, uh, at Pixar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, what do you think about Gravity? And like, I don't know why I feel this way because like I was like, oh, I should just in case. I'd be like, oh, I think it was you know good, blah blah. blah. And then he was like, I really liked it. I'm like, yeah, I know it was a masterpiece, right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, it was. It was like this moment because everybody got like so tied up in the weird nerd stuff around it, where it was like, because I, I, I heard all this weird backlash from people being like, oh, I don't believe the story, and it's like, oh, it's so it's so ham hand. And I was like, I don't think I don't think of that. You know me, I'm like the opposite. If I like something, I was like, I fucking love that. No, I know. I, I know. came out of, I came out of Gravity literally being like that was the most um, that was like that was seeing Lord of the Rings for the first time. Or it was like seeing Star Wars for the first time. It was the first time I sat in a theater in a long time where I was just felt like a kid. fucking in awe, like not yeah. even believing how and, you do and, this and, as a movie. Like and, and, I was just blown away. And I know for us, we were sat there and like, "What the fuck are we doing on this sh shitty videos on you? Like, what is <laughs> yeah, like, it was this? Is, was watching this master of cinema." Well, there's like, a point where it's like just, not that you could do something, but there's a point where even when you watch really good movies, like now that you know we've been making movies, you can understand it. Like you'd be yeah, like, yeah. "I get how they did that. I can't do it as well, but I understand. Like I could get yeah. that." When I watched Gravity, I was just like, I don't even know where no idea how that to happened. begin. Like I don't even know how. Like, what do you even conceptualize? Just like the blocking of that movie. I'm just like, I, I, just, yeah. I don't yeah. even know. And it's so visually good, and also it messed with your heart so much. Oh my because god! Because there's there's several moments where you're just like, Oh my god, you're right there. Just grab it. Just grab <laughs> yeah. Your, yeah. Oh, oh no, dude. no! And then like yeah. one thing after another, yeah. like and spoiling it at the end. You know, she's oh yeah, yeah. And oh, then she and gets stuck in the stuff. Oh, and that one, yeah, that, that last, yeah, that was the most. It's it was like, so smart because it was so weightless that like that final yeah. thing was almost the most terrifying moment because all of a sudden you felt gravity yeah. and underwater and it was just like so she lands and you're like yeah I remember just like literally not breathing Christ. I was just staring and yeah. then she's going down it's like no yeah. Yeah. and then like, she gets out and she gets caught in the thing it's like no and, 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 and like it was it was interesting because like, again you're thinking about back on the conceptual level it's like okay to use water and the feeling of drowning as to contrast this whole movie it's just like where do you, how do you get to that decision like I don't even well, like, such an so, elegant it's such straightforward a clean way of script. getting a feeling across i was just like mind blow anyway well I, there's so little stuff that even touches the surface of the planet in that movie and not to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't watched it but it's like the, i think that's a message too is that like she spends the whole time in this like harsh environment yeah the most inhospitable environment you can yeah. imagine but then it's like earth not that much better we're just better, just, better yeah. dealing with yeah. it you know yeah. it's just as inhospitable do yeah. you know i don't know if they shot it later or if they cut it but there's a whole thing shot with the guy on the radio that she talks to with the dog. It was a short film, short film that his brother did. I still haven't seen it, but I think it is online now. Did you watch oh, it? No. Is it the, so? It's shot wholly. After yeah, it was. It was Caranzo's uh, Alfonso Caranzo's brother did it. It's named after the guy on the radio. His name is Anwat. I think is his name. Yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. Is that, is the guy with the dog. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he's like. Then when you see what his environment's like, yeah. he's in the middle of the tundra. He looks like a northern Asia like Siberian yeah, yeah, hunter, like Mongolian or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like this guy. And it's like. You, you see him, you're like, I don't want to be there either. You know what I mean? It's like, this is, it's all horrible. All these environments are terrible. Yeah, and I will say, like, for a movie, like, you know, for uh, I think for us, you know, just from the filmmaking background, it's very easy during the movie to just, okay, oh, okay, I can see what they're doing. This shot, this, oh, okay, this is the reverse. Oh, it's interesting lighting here. It does you get, ruin you get it a bit, that. doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah. I was, for the first time, I think, in years, I was 100% wrapped in Gravity. I was not thinking about the technical side of it, aside from like the first shot, which was a one take. I was like, oh, that's an interesting one take. But then from that point on, it was just like, I was 100% there with it. I was, I was like, same way. I walked out of the theater being like, I've not felt like that in a movie there's for that, years. There's that moment where the silence is just so powerful. It's like the first time that everything's getting smashed yeah, to pieces. Yeah, yeah,
<laughs> oh, of course, yeah, yeah. It's just like nothing. And, and that's so it's a powerful moment. It was and really that, weird. And I think a lesser filmmaker would be like, oh, we need to have some yeah. kind of sound I'm, to do. It's like, no, just be quiet. Just watch it. Yeah. Everyone would have Michael Bayed it, and I'm glad that. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Well, they, there's a good interview somewhere about the the uh, script notes he got. Um, from oh, the studio. interesting. And they eventually, like, you know, they kind of let him do it, but they definitely responded and gave him notes, and they were like, can't, literally one of the notes was like, can she have a romance with the uh, with the NASA guy on the other end of the line? Like, can't that be, like, her Ed husband? Harris. Yeah, literally, yeah. Ed, Ed Harris' yeah. character, he's like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, why? Like, th- those were all the questions. We're like, can, can she have a romance there now? Um, can NASA be, can he be coming back and forth to NASA the whole time? And stuff like that. It's like, no, of course not. That's, no, and, and never do it. And you, know, and you know what it really comes down to is it's like, it's just everybody in Hollywood has these ideas of like, okay, here's how we make a movie. And here's how we make money on the movie, right? It's like, okay, here, on, the, on a high level, sci-fi movie starring Sandra Bullock. And it's her, just the whole, the whole movie, sci-fi movie. And it's like, any traditional guy would be like, nah, nah. that wouldn't be it. No. Nah. But it's like, because it's a woman as the main character, I think it's like that. Th- my mom really wanted to see it because she really likes Sandra Bullock. Mm-hmm. That's why she saw it. <laughs> like, if it was like, hey, mom, want to watch this sci fi thing? She'd be like, no, go away. I don't want to watch this sci fi shit. But it's like, there's a certain level of like, uh, from f- this is sort of like, this is a conversation I had earlier, which is kind of interesting, which is like, we are in a world with analytics and data, and everything can be measured. And we know Netflix knows the moment your eyes look away from a thing, and when you're clicking, and the mo- the second that you lose interest. And there's so much that we measure. And from a from a perspective of creation, if we go into that from that perspective, it's like okay, we should be as Netflix can House of Cards, sure bet people will like it because mm-hmm. we have this. We'll plug these things, and we know these analytics and stuff like that. But there's also the side of things that's like what you can't measure, and it's like, and where that that filmmaker taps into that underlying truth, that underlying resonance, which is, I think, if even if you had all the data in the world, everything, every aspect of, that you could measure, you still couldn't get at. And that to me is like why I think movies are still interesting because you can get away from this boring route application of mathematics and, and, and data analytics, and try and get to something that you can't measure and display it anyway. It's like art, man. Yeah, man. No, like, but <laughs> what you're talking about, though, I've seen people try to apply that to the theatrical experience. Like, it wasn't relative, Relativity Media was started by a guy. That's what he did. Is but he had the money ball approach. Yeah, yeah, Essentially, yeah, yeah. to yep. analyzing, like, what would make a hit. But I think then you end up with stuff that's generic, more generic, or it's, like, middle of the road. Yeah, And you yeah. don't end up with stuff like Gravity. Like, Gravity would never fall into no, those there's equations. A whole, there's a whole Wall Street article about the guy who sells that stats. The biggest problem with that is that you're actually the the big problem is that you're measuring trends that are popular now. Yep. So you're constantly chasing. It was like yep. right before Game of Thrones, nobody be like, oh, Game of Thrones is like a perfect. That's like the thing to do, right? People love. Hey, who, there's lots of fancy things you, that you are know popular. Be a cultural and, milestone that will go beyond the nerdy crowd. Yeah, a, fa- a hard fantasy novel adaptation. Yeah, but now if you were to do analytics, you'd be like, oh, we should totally do a hard fantasy, and then you're gonna have a bunch of like copied Game of Thrones. They're mm-hmm. all gonna suck or be just not as good as Game of Thrones, and then somebody will do something that nobody thought of. And then that will be the big popular thing. The problem is that when you do stats is that you're assuming... You're looking at the world around you. You're not looking well, at... Well, yeah, what? and there's, like, everything from wars to economics to to just, like, science discoveries constantly changes what people are interested in and what mm-hmm. culture is about. So, like, to constantly be measuring what's already popular, like, yeah, you'll do okay, but you're not going to make the... Again, you're not going to make the Star Wars. You're not going to make the, yeah. the Game of Thrones. You're not going to make whatever. Yeah. It's one of those you never tell too. You're not going to make the Red vs. Blue. Yeah, but, yeah, it's like if you take Red vs. Blue, you take anything... If you take something that did well and you, or somebody say something that didn't do well, and you just moved it to another point in history, would it have done better? Same That's, movie, yeah. yep. same production, everything. Yeah. No. Like I've always wondered, what's the movie that made the most amount of money based on nothing else other than the fact of when it came out? And I think oh. Godfather might have been that. It was the mm-hmm. heyday of theatrical. Uh, then it got uh, cable. Then it got. VHS, mm-hmm. they got VHS rental, uh, then they got DVD, got like laser right disc. at the window of all these new technologies of w- Windows it emerged got all of them. as it was going out. Yeah. Oh, that's like, there's not going to be a laser disc of Wolf of Wall Street, uh, probably. You know? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen Inside Louis and Davis, that's literally what like the, that movie's about. It's like, there was all these folk singers before Bob Dylan. They were just... It was just the. It was literally they, uh, just the wrong time. Like all these guys were starving artists. All these guys were making beautiful folk songs, and it was and just, just like as committed and un, unrelenting. Everybody, towards everybody, that. yep, exactly. Everybody who quit before Bob Dylan, like that's just suck for you. <laughs> like that's it. Like the moment Bob well, Dylan to, happened, you all so, became huge. And so to tie this conversation all the way back to where we we're go. going, timing. Timing is such an interesting thing because you look at you know, even like you know, the Malcolm Gladwell thing where it's like everybody who made a difference in the computer world is within a year of each other. Yeah. All the directors, Spielberg and, and Coppola, within a year of each other because they were the right age for the time that different things within outside of their control came into place. And I feel like that a lot of the times with what, what we do, which is like 
we're in a place where technology just got there, mm-hmm. and the comp- and then the ability to do editing just got there, and the fact that you can even distribute directly, it, yep. it just exactly. got there. And it was yep. like, if and you think about it, it's like if I was five years younger, I would be in film school and I'd be catching up. Mm-hmm. And if I was five years older, I would have gotten. You know, it's like there's, there's that wind. There's a window that we're definitely feels like we're in, and it's like it's just it's just how much it's so weird sometimes to think about like how much of it's just a like, good thing you were born. Like, then, <laughs> yeah, I and I'm older demographically than most of the people who are making content on YouTube. I mean, it's you, like you guys you're one of the pioneers, way younger well, yeah, than yeah. I. But I was 28 when I started, just because the technology. I was in college when the internet began. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know yeah. it's been around for decades, yeah, but, but 95 was when it became a real commercial AOL. level product. Yeah, <laughs> that's AOL. Good. That's when it is, and uh, which still makes money off. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah. And AOL even the CompuServe like pre Prodigy predated yeah, all Prodigy. that. But it's like then all of a sudden like everyone had an email address in like yeah. 95. Oh, real quick, this game we played. What was your first username? Uh, gosh, my first one was Belasco, <laughs> and that was my character in Ultima that then I used on <laughs> BBS boards. <laughs> Yeah, That's nice. Great. Dial up BBS Gav? sports. Mine was Gavino. Gavino. Still, to this day is my username. <laughs> yeah, Gavino. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Good one. Nice, good one. But it's like it's like so, th- and that's probably the most common question, like at panels and stuff like yeah, that, that we yeah, get yeah. is like, "Hey, what's your advice to someone starting out today?" It's like I have no idea because I'm not starting out today. Yeah, exactly. I, I really and the stuff I would tell you. I uh, wouldn't be applicable it's to relevant. you guys today. It was relevant to me at the time, and maybe it's relevant now. I have no clue. Yeah. Like some of the biggest success stories within our company, like building out our merch model, building out our own website, that wasn't. I mean, it's we. we I, I'm proud of the vision that we had to do that, but we also had to do those things because mm-hmm. there wasn't a YouTube, and we couldn't do those. We couldn't, you know, sell ads and all that mm-hmm. on the scale mm-hmm. that you can with YouTube now, or you know, the way things are. Ad networks said for video pre roll and all that. Those things. That, Video pre-roll didn't even exist. Yeah. How would you yeah. video pre-roll in a downloadable file? You know, wouldn't even make sense. But uh, or they'd be pissed. Yeah, <laughs> it's like everyone would see it every single time, and then you'd have a version where it's stripped out like right away. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to build all those things because we had to do those things to survive. And if they worked, we just held on to them. Yeah. Like we had premium subscriptions back in 2003 that looked just like Kickstarter today. If you did, if yeah, you subscribed yeah, yeah. to this level, you got this benefit. You're welcome. By this the way. Level. Yeah. There you go. He was one of our. <laughs> he bought our first season three DVD. I remember. Whoa. Yeah. So back you're like there. you're hardcore. I was mega really fan, hardcore fan. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I ended up directing a season of Red vs. Blue. It's a very weird change. That's awesome. To be to a viewer. From, and then, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm now <clears throat> now I'm Caboose. Bobby season seven. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever wonder what like because we're all this kind of the same kind of person in terms of what we're interested in stuff. Sure. Sure. If we were born. 30, 40 years before, what do you think we would, like, what kind of people are we? Like, what would we be doing? That's a good point. No, what would we have done in, in Hollywood? <laughs> trying to make our way in Hollywood. I don't know. I, I was starting out to be a doctor before this stuff started, so I probably would have stayed on that path. The window is really amazing. Like yeah, yeah. 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 And it, it, and what, in the 50s, I would have been um, racially uh, <laughs> uh, uh, segregated against in a lot of different places. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was making that joke yeah. about, 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 about Johnny Rockets. I was like, that's so cool. It's so nostalgic. I'm like, yeah, the 50s. Like when I couldn't go into this restaurant. I love that. Yeah. I, I always <laughs> French shows up. Hey, does anybody need a railroad? Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, yeah, blowing myself up, building this country's railroad. There yeah. you go. I have I'm the same Irish thing, descent, though. So I would have been like in the you gutter. Would've, we would have met each other in the middle. Yeah. Driving that golden <laughs> spot. Of course, he would be east. making a movie about you. Yeah. I yeah. have the same <laughs> thoughts when I, when I think about the slow mo stuff is that. I'm in the perfect window for doing slow mo. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. five years from now, I mean, the iPhone already does It'll 120 frames. <laughs> yeah, I could have missed it by five years, and then slow mo wouldn't be unique in the way it is now. So and it's not. It's kind of not now. Like everyone, like a an epic. But when can you do but when slow-mo. you started it out, it was like, it was like what? Yeah. And yeah. it was. And the, the big thing for me was always like seeing it out of the context of a documentary a on a yeah. bullet yeah. shooting yeah. through a b- water balloon. It's like, great, fantastic. Like really, how many really water really balloons? Have, how many how many frames <laughs> of footage are there of a card being shot through, of a milk droplet forming the crown? Like, uh, Do Bad we need apple. to keep shooting it? <laughs> do we need to keep shooting at this point? I think we're done. <laughs> Let me finally do it. I was always, I've always held out. I've told you this. I've always held out that one day, this is be the decline of society, there will be a slow-mo video of a man who agrees to get shot in the shoulder. In we did talk about this, and will uh, be, and full on, a bullet will go through, and he'll capture it in full. It'll be some performance art I mean, piece. It's gonna happen within soon, and I will. I'll bet within two years. Ooh. Well, I've told you I mean, about my website for when I'm dead, right? No, no. It's not a website. Good. It's called Bodies for Movies, <laughs> and you can donate your corpse to a film, and they'll blow it up or. It's like <laughs> a stunt really corpse. That's, that's, yeah. so <laughs> that's so bad. That's so bad. Stunt corpse. Stunt when work. I was a kid, what I thought stunt people were just people who wanted to kill themselves. They let them jump off a building and they'll film it. In, Cor- in Korea, that is still the case, actually. In Southeast yeah. Asia, that is in fact the case. Um, there was an incredible uh, NPR article about the uh, piece about stuntmen because it's like to get in, it's like you're barrier to entry. It's like you you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself. 
everyone else is willing to, so you got to do it too. And it's like, all right, we fine, did it. Go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this, and by the way, I think there's just like, and, and well, who knows, right? Digital. I've seen some digital tests of like, you know, stunt guy get thrown out of a car and gets run over. And it's like a digital, fully digital version of it. It's not there yet, but it's like, as with all technology, everyone's like, that's what I think of film school. It's like, yeah, digital sucks right now. It's like, you know that like computers get better, right? <laughs> all the like, time. It's, like, it's not like your computer just stopped. Like technology <laughs> continues. <laughs> I was like, well, you know that this will look better eventually. And I was like, I, I remember. That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole rant. It feels cool. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, everyone like, was like. All films the same, too. It's like nobody didn't like the change from Technicolor to other film. There's people who were like, oh, Technicolor looks, makes shit look better than real life. Why are we moving to fucking Kodak and this other bullshit? Yeah. Well, then I. But of course, well, film's only I, real film unless it's on Kodak. Well, then right? I argue, too. I'm like, well, if you. Okay, do you mean 35 million film? Because 70 is arguably. Is, is, Superior in every way, in every metric that you measure film versus digital, 70 beats 35. So how come everything isn't shot in 70? Like, well, it's practical. It's like, right! <laughs> exactly! <laughs> Thank like, you! Like digital, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it's crazy. I mean, you can tell, illustrate that to people. You show them video games, show them real-time rendered animation. A video game today would have been a top-of-the-line movie yeah. in 95. Well, yeah. so we, we keep going on tangents, but they're interesting tangents. I hope you guys don't mind. Not at all. Um, but there was one really interesting <laughs> thing that Matt and I, we talked about. What is it about video game graphics that we cannot see the past? Because when you saw the N64, I was like, this is real life. Oh, like, I know like what you're the saying. first time I saw the there's N64. No, there's no, like, in, 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 in the retrospect, the hindsight of it is so hard. Like, how did I even think of that this was even close to looking good? <laughs> everyone has a game when they saw it, they said, this is as good as it's going to get. Yeah. And unreal. I think first unreal for moment. me. Like, unreal? I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was yeah. like, this yeah. is it. Ocarina of Time, the, the opening cutscene of Ocarina of Time where, like, the whatever, the spirits are, like, spinning in the air and they look gold. I'm just like, what the hell? Matt cried. I was like, this is These real life. These are real. This is real. I look back now, like, what? I can always pinpoint those moments in video games though, like to me, there's always been moments where I look at something and it's like, oh, that's the first time I've seen that in a game, and then every game will have that, and then you think, like, <laughs> yeah. like Lens Flare or something like that. Yeah. Like I remember the first Splinter Cell on Xbox, there was like a fabric hanging, yeah. there was light shining through the fabric, oh, I right, walked right, through, right. it bumped the fabric, oh, and yep, the shadow I changed, the and I was like, I was like, shot. That's real life. <laughs> yeah, and now, yeah. if a game didn't have that, you'd be like, "This game is broken." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone no, broke I remember it. the exact hallway in Splinter Cell. And the only thing it is, I think it has something to do with the fact that because, because obviously it's not real life, we know that. But there's something. It's like it occupies this sort of abstract animation side of things, where it's just like, "Well, this is the best animation style I've seen." You're know, like, I, I feel the same way. You're gonna feel the same way about like Frozen and the. Or when you go movies. back to look at the first Toy Story, it's like yeah. it feels so rudimentary. Um, yeah, it's just weird because I think like as you in that locked in that moment, it's like that's where animation is. Right, and so it's like you don't have context for other similarly abstract depictions of reality. Yeah. So that's the best that you get. But, but everyone has that. Effect. People so, don't yeah. want games to get too realistic, right? If if games became just the same as life, but they Some had to build do. in the stuff. Like <laughs> imagine if you're running in a video game and your character just trips. Like, yeah. People hilarious. trip in real life. But you'd be Brothers. annoyed in the game if you're running along and then you trip. <laughs> for well, no wasn't that Jurassic Park trespasser game where they had they modeled out your whole body so your gun would get stuck in doors and you had to like back <laughs> on my turn gun. sideways and like <laughs> slide like through it? <laughs> yeah, it was like just That's like real great. life. It's the co-op of first person shooters. <laughs> oh wow. my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is that that, that does happen. You know, we talking to guys who are like uh, like military guys and like, yeah, when they were when we wear night vision, we only see this very narrow window. Like we fall a lot. <laughs> because you have a you have a choice. You either look at where guys are shooting you from or your feet. And guess what? Guys are shooting at you. You're looking at them, so it's like yeah, they're like yeah, we de we have a thing like in in over the radio, we'll call out when we fall because it happens so often. As a joke, we all yell parkour when we Park fall. That's <laughs> amazing, and it's like because it's like well yeah, and it's like it's, it's always it's always funny when the real life version of it's just like yeah, that's just stumbly. You're stumbly as hell. You're just falling over something. But yeah. that's like I've been playing GTA Online, and uh, oh yeah yeah, in the single player game you can skip cab rides and stuff. And in online like, yeah. you can't, and you end up just like. Sat in a cabin. It's like I did this earlier today, and now I'm doing it in the game. <laughs> it's just inconvenient. We were trying to come up with the most inflammatory comment you can make, especially in oh, a year yeah. when consoles are being released. Oh, yeah. And we decided that you could just get on Twitter and just say, "Hey guys, what do you think is the best console? The Xbox, the PS4, or the iPhone?" And that was just, like, <laughs> that, just like that's great. Because everyone thinks they know where that's, that's gonna go, it. and then when they get yeah. to it, they'd be like, oh, "I hate man. you." That's amazing. That's it. That's we should amazing. all we should all tweet that and make a website for <laughs> right sponsor now. from that. Uh, we should wrap it up here. We've been yeah, running been here. This is Sorry, a good guys. one. This is a fun one. I really enjoyed this conversation. I just want to say, can somebody keep wanting to say to tie this back in? Is that we talked about what we do doing yeah. narrative stuff one thing we should all realize too is that you know gavin has some huge like viral hits i know you guys do too mm -hmm. but in general what we do narrative wise at least for us i've always accepted the fact that telling a story which is what i want to do 
is always going to hit at a lower level. A series is a different game to play. Yep. Yeah. It's, you, like, it's, it's, it's restaurants versus fast food. McDonald's is going to sell more hamburgers than whatever you whatever you got, even if you got the best restaurant in the world. You will never be the cat falling off the roof video of the day, which settle, or the kid coming home from the dentist. You know, yeah. That'll be the big video. You'll never beat that video ever. Like for Red versus Blue, I could, t- I could sit in front of a room full of people and explain what Red versus Blue is, or I could stand up yeah. there and go, Leroy Jenkins and everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was a and huge. The, and the problem right now is that our narrative stuff is held to that same standard. As well, the yeah, page video. views is just a universal number that is meaningless. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you guys have. 10 million views doesn't seem like anything now that every music video has 100 million views. Yeah. You know that every cat video so has the, 200 million views. So there's, so like, no, there's no way to measure what we do, I just, honestly, <laughs> fairly. I just want to see a version of that video where he actually does go, Leroy James. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. An entire crowd. You're rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you see, it's something you just have to accept, and it's totally different. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a good and thing the world's to be able changing. to make videos. I mean, week. we'll see what happens in five. I, I, part of it is what I kind of alluded to is like, I just don't even know. I think they'll change, but as of now, like the inner face and an experience of YouTube I don't think is best suited for long form content like right. that yeah. uh, whereas Netflix is or Hulu is but even then they're not perfect either and they're going to figure it out who knows what HBO is going to be five years yeah. from now so yeah. yeah we were nominating our awards and it's like we were nominating the best television show category we we're like is this even a category anymore because what does that where mean does, where does VGHS fall with mm-hmm. House of Cards with Walking Dead I mean I know where House of Cards compared to even just something on NBC like yeah. at this point like, I, yeah. know, I know she has some trouble with the uh, pronunciation of it we all understand that and we apologize VGHS for, very VG, difficult yeah. very difficult, <laughs> very difficult. Uh, so what you guys got going on plug some stuff uh, well, we have the Rishi podcast all the time. Gavin works on Slow Mo Guys and our Achievement Hunter, which are gameplay videos on YouTube. Uh, and oh, real quick, I want to play Gauntlet mm-hmm. Season Two, which oh. was I think I think <laughs> Frank, I, was on. I'm, I'm not kidding here. I think it's the best reality thing on online. Period. It was so funny. It was cut together well. It was written well. It was en- actually entertaining. It really funny. To, it was fun to make, right? I had a lot of fun when we did that. Just hanging out. It's our being... competitive, in quotes, <laughs> gaming show that we do. It, and it honestly and was. Frank was on it. I, and it honestly was. It was a great experience and hilarious. So I know a lot of our audience had not has not seen it. We've been pushing people over to it. Guys, check out Gauntlet Season 2. It's uh, how many episodes is it total? Uh, eight in total. Eight total yeah. episodes. Fantastic. It, I think it was hilarious. I was laughing my ass off. There's the nothing we enjoy time. more than making fun of ourselves. Yeah, oh, holding ourselves the, in uh, low the, regard. The Greg camping episode is my personal. Like when oh, we're all just playing this, incredible. just so I, who who knew it could get so tense? It was amazing. <laughs> it's like so many different subplots to that game. Like everyone's Justine's redemption and all that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, incredible! And just, then uh, yeah. we have our mainstay shows, uh, Reverse Blue, and then of course our new show Ruby, Ruby, uh, Ruby. which uh, is which as far as I can tell, the awesome. only type, only animation really type of series that's being attempted. I mean, I guess well, like that's well, that's CG, like as you say, Western anime. It's, we're trying yeah, to do it's something totally different. different. Yeah, it's yeah, totally different. Trying to do something different. So. Just uh, check us out at roosterteeth.com or youtube.com slash roosterteeth. Cool. Thanks awesome. for coming by, guys. Thanks, yeah, thank thanks you, guys. Yeah. yeah. It was top. The, the yeah. end. At the end.